Hello, good morning, and today is Tuesday the 18th of August, and I'm pleased to announce, as you can see behind you, my very first Flight Simulator 2020 video on the channel. Now, I know there's been many videos out there, people have got the press release, but I was involved with the beta and the alpha. I've had Microsoft Flight Simulator for some time. Some of you may ask, why didn't I get the press pass? Well, that's another story. Never really looked into it at the time, and I don't know if it was gauged on how big or not your channel is or not, but I was quite happy to just stick with the uh, alpha and the beta, or the beta and the alpha, whatever way around it was. Anyway, for this very first video, I want to quickly talk about peripherals. Microsoft Flight Simulator is accessible to everyone and I'm sure in almost every household you have a Microsoft Xbox One or Xbox 360 controller and I just wanted to let you know that both will work with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and because I'm a bit of a cheapskate and my Microsoft dongle that connects the computer was for the 360 at the time. I've just been using 360 controllers in games. But there's something you're going to need to do, otherwise it's going to drive you absolutely crazy, is change it to sensitivity and the dead zones on the Microsoft's controllers. Because with this one, because it's been well used, I have got an Xbox One controller, and I'll be honest with you, I've found no difference. I just want to put that out there. The 360 controller and the Xbox One controller, the rumble, I've not felt a massive difference between the two. And as this is just wireless, this why I continued using it. But as these have been, or as this controller has been well used, I don't know if you can see there, the buttons are worn and that. And I'm moving that around on the screen there. They don't always return dead to centre. And what you're going to want to do is change the dead zone. Otherwise, when you're flying, you're never going to be able to fly straight and level. You're always going to be jinking between left and right. And the reason I'm making this video is because it's not obvious where you need to go to do this. And I just wanted to share this with you. So anyone who's using the Xbox One or the Xbox 360 controller you're going to need to go into options I'll do that with the mouse and we're going to go over to controls now this is going to bring up my controller input and my default controls are the keyboard the mouse and the controller now just in front of you there you're going to recognize that that says Xbox 360 and the reason that it says that is because I'm not using the default profile so just before filming this I came in here earlier to quickly jog my memory of what I gotta do and even with it staring you plain in the face I completely forgot how to do this this was months ago that I set this up you've selected your Xbox controller it's highlighted there shows an Xbox one controller but it is the Xbox 360 and we want to change the sensitivity presets. Come back to do it today and I've completely flummoxed myself. You'd be looking down here somewhere. The preset. It's actually right in front of you. It says there on the left hand side sensitivity. Now we're going to make sure that you've selected controller. And then click sensitivity. And in front of you we've got the axis of the sticks. So on the Xbox controller, your left stick controls the ailerons and the elevators. So our pitching up and down, left and right. And as it is, there is no dead zone set. So if I get this controller and I move that on screen, you see that the slightest little touch is creating a, uh, a pitch and a yaw on the controller. And we don't want it to do that that is going to drive you mental. You're not going to be able to fly the plane straight. So what I've done, I've come down and I've set a dead zone previously. But I'm going to do it on screen here. And I found for the my controller, and this will vary, the mileage will vary with your setup, your controller, that with the dead zone I've set there, if I go left and right, I'm making no change on the x-axis very slightly then I can even higher it up if I put 
let's try 19%. I'll show you that there. Left and right, that little movement is not going to change it. But on the y axis, the forwards and the backwards, again, I've got the same problem. So I'm going to drop that dead zone. Let's go with 19. I did have it 17 before. Let's try 19. So on the up and the down, I mean, moving that, it makes no input change to the aircraft. So I actually, I've got to push forward and then I'm making an impact on the aircraft. Same as left and right. So when you click done, that's not saved and applied it. And just to mention, because I've already done this, the minute you change any of those settings, it's going to pop up and ask you to save a profile. And I call my profile Xbox 360. But what you need to remember to do is to come down the bottom here, click apply and save. And we'll get a little wearing icon in the bottom and that's now save those settings. So just to prove what I was on about, if we quickly go back and I'm just going to go back to the welcome screen. If we jump into a flight, and this is something I want to show you in my next video. But if we uh, if we jump over to the O2, set as departure, we're going to fly. Now I've just switched to this view here. This is the like spotting view. There are many other views on the simulator. Uh, I'm just going to put 10 degrees of flap stone just to slow down. I've got the camera in front of me, but it would be on your left hand side. It's just covering the airspeed. And now we've set the controller up. We're not jinking left and right to actually make an input. I actually turn the controller. If you haven't set that dead zone up, the plane would be going all over the place. Now, I can set that controller dead zone up for the other views, and uh, we're just going over Canary Wharf below us, the like, I think it's financial district, and this is different scenery. I've actually paid for the upgraded London scenery. I'll be bringing this in another video, so there's many different views, things that I've not set back up. This is my very, very first video. And as you can see, from this view, we can fly the plane. I can move it around. We can spin around there. I mean, so this is really what one of the key things of this Microsoft Flight Simulator is about. It's accessible to everyone. You can just get up in the air, get the plane stable, level flight, and just do your sightseeing. It is absolutely fantastic and I'm loving it. I actually showed this someone yesterday and they're blown away. Um, they, I think they'd like to have it on the Xbox. I don't know if there's any more news about it coming to Xbox yet. I'm going to need to look that up. But this was just a very quick video for anyone using an Xbox One or an Xbox 360 controller to get that set up. Otherwise it would absolutely drive you mad. As I mentioned, I've got more, many, many more videos to be doing on this now. And I know the purists out there might say, well, it's not the best input or control method. It's a bit like arguing you're using a joypad and a wheel in a racing game. But for flight, to me, it's more than accessible. And I know an Xbox controller like the back of my hand, and when I'm in VR, I'm not going to be worrying about pressing keys or that. I've already got all my I've already got all my primary flight controls set up on here. Anyway, this was a quick video. I just wanted to those of you who may be puzzled how to get this set up on this control, what you've got to do. Hope you're really enjoying this. I know there's a lot of new people going to be coming to the simulator. And it is a very, very accessible simulator. Right, thank you for watching this video. And keep an eye, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Keep an eye out. More videos coming. I've got a How Fast Can We Lapse a Cuba that is already sort of in pre-production. But I've cut it short so we could get this video out.
fantastic. We'll be covering this in more detail and I will catch you again. Peace out.